it was possible for the United Kingdom, the German Empire and the Russian Empire to form an alliance after 1910 on the fact that each of these countries was a monarchy and the monarchs were all cousins, so they had family ties. Nicholas II and Wilhelm II were especially close, exchanging telegrams and letters as to prior to the Great War. So what if the three cousins formed an alliance? How would this change the entire world? To start off with the obvious, this video is not realistic, as there are many reasons on why this couldn't happen. For example, Britain and Germany were engaging in a naval arms race, while Britain and Russia were competing in Asia for dominance, but also in the Mediterranean Sea, with Germany and Russia having issues over the Balkans, as Germany was also allied to Austria-Hungary. Britain was also sympathetic to France, which was a German rival and an ally of Russia, so for this alliance to have a tiny chance at succeeding, Britain needs to seize their relations with France and Germany needs to do the same with Austria-Hungary, but also Britain and Russia need to forget about their centuries-long rivalry. To put it simply, it's more possible for all of the Balkans to abandon their irredentist claims to unite and become the strongest country in the world, than for the Cousins Alliance to succeed. Don't take this video seriously, but had this gigantic alliance formed, the whole world would be drastically changed. Now that I have told you why it's impossible to happen, let's explore the possibilities of it happening and after that how the Great War would change. It has to happen in 1910 or after that, as then George V was crowned as King of the United Kingdom and the British Dominions, Emperor of India, so then the family ties could have played a key role in forging these alliances. As for how it's possible, it will be very tricky, but here is my take. Queen Victoria of Great Britain had made strategic royal marriages and she hoped that it would secure peace in the entire world, which means that no country would topple the British Empire which was the largest and strongest country in the world during the Victorian era. These royal marriages were strategic and initiated by Queen Victoria as to secure British dominance forever. Here are a few examples of how this happened. The eldest daughter of Queen Victoria, Vicky, was married to the heir of the Prussian throne, which was the largest German-speaking country at the time, excluding Austria. This was a big gamble for the British, as Albert, the husband of Queen Victoria, had told that Prussia would be the one to unite Germany, which indeed happened, so their gamble was correct, and Wilhelm II and George V ended up having the same grandmother. Queen Victoria. As to be sure that Britain doesn't fall behind if Prussia were to somehow not unify Germany, four other of Victoria's kids were married to other smaller German states. As such, via royal marriages, the British thought that they had secured control over Germany. This was always the vision of Queen Victoria, and here lies my point of divergence. It would be recognized that Britain should indeed ally with these countries to form the Cousins Alliance as if they don't, all of the hard work of Queen Victoria would go to waste, and her attempts at alliance building. After all, Queen Victoria had 42 grandchildren in total, and out of all of them, seven became monarchs at some point. This included not only Wilhelm II, Nicholas II and George V, but also four queens, which were the Queen of Norway, Spain, Greece and Romania. As such, she is often referred to as the grandmother of Europe due to this. So, considering this, I think that it's fair to say that the British shouldn't let these royal ties go to waste and try to pursue an alliance with Germany and Russia. The thing is that George V rose to power to the British throne in 1910, and by that time I think it's already too late to try and form this alliance. Not only is it too late, but the Great War is set to start in 1914. So, it is impossible for just four years for all of these countries to effectively ally and participate in the Great War. Not only would the Great War come in too soon, but Germany and Russia had already chosen their allies, making Britain kind of isolated. The reason for that is because Germany had already signed the dual alliance with Austria-Hungary in 1879, but were also initiating the triple alliance with Italy in the picture. So, by 1910, Germany had already found new allies, and they wouldn't abandon them for an alliance with Britain. As for Russia, in 1894, the Dual Entente was formed, a defensive alliance between them and France. So yet again, by 1910, the Russians had already found an ally in the region, and they wouldn't abandon them to ally with Britain. As such, to have a better chance at the Cousins Alliance to form, we need George V to come to power a lot sooner, as Wilhelm II came to power in 1888, with Nicholas II coming to power in 1894, so there was a six-year difference between the two. George V came to power as I said earlier in 1910, so quite a while after his two cousins. As such, we would need the predecessor of George V to die a lot sooner, giving George a better chance of forming the Cousins Alliance. Edward VII succeeded Queen Victoria in 1901 and ruled for 9 years before he died in 1910. 
During the beginning of his reign, the Second Boer War was ongoing, so perhaps some South African nationalists decide to take his life, causing a political crisis in Britain and perhaps making them drop out of the war, as two of their monarchs would die in a very short time span. This is one way that Edward VII could be eliminated in 1902 or 1903, which would later pave the way for his only surviving son, George V, to rise to power and become the King of the United Kingdom. Actually, exactly this almost happened. Jean-Baptiste Cipido was a Belgian anarchist who tried to assassinate Prince Edward in 1900 at the Brussels North Railway Station. Jean-Baptiste Cipido was outraged at the slaughter of thousands in the Second Boer War. As such, he hopped onto the royal compartment of the train before it left and fired two shots at Edward, but missed both of them. He was only 15 years old at the time. So how about you get alive and try to do something useful? Anyways, sorry for being passive-aggressive yet again. This is just one way on how Edward VII could have been eliminated, which would then allow George V to inherit the throne 7 or 8 years earlier, which is more than enough for him to build a successful alliance with Germany and Russia. For the sake of this video, let's say that George V rises to power in 1903. So what is next? Well, he would immediately approach Germany and Russia, trying to secure better relations. This would see some immediate success, but all would go wrong in the next year. This is because in 1904, the Russo-Japanese war would start. Of course, you may say that this wouldn't concern the British, and they may even support Russia in this war as they would want to ally with them according to the narrative of the video. Well, on the night of the 21st, 22nd of October 1904, all would go wrong for the Russo-British relations. This is because historically on that date, the Dogger Bank incident occurred. Basically, the Russian Navy mistook civilian British fishing trawlers for Japanese Navy torpedo boats. As such, they fired on them. As Russia and Japan were in a state of war, and in the panic they also fired at each other. This resulted in several British deaths and a sunken ship. So this incident was not taken lightly by the British. Britain historically closed the Suez Canal for Russia, so they had to go all around Africa to reach the Far East and fight Japan. It is possible that with George V trying to make an alliance with Russia, that Britain tries to cover up this incident, but it would be too risky. Perhaps the incident doesn't happen at all, as it was too obscure and happened mainly because of Russian incompetence. My suggestion is that Britain and Russia would start working together as soon as George V comes to power, which would be in this alternate history in 1903, one year before the Russo-Japanese war. During that time, Russia would negotiate with Japan regarding the Russians getting more influence in Manchuria and securing a warm water port. The Japanese didn't like this deal, as it would have limited their expansion later into China, so they decided to strike the Russian Navy in the Far East, making Russia declare war on them. Britain can support Russia in this war and punish Japan for their actions, but there is a problem. In the beginning of 1902, the Anglo-Japanese alliance was signed. The goal of Britain was to limit Russian expansion in Manchuria, but also to preserve the balance of power by preserving the territorial integrity of China and Korea. In this alternate history, shortly after this alliance is signed, we would need the British Parliament to overturn it, as they would prefer to ally with Russia on the basis that George V and Nicholas II are cousins, the result of the hard work of Queen Victoria, which many people still respected. It would be claimed that Queen Victoria would have wanted this Anglo-Russian alliance to happen, but let me remind you that the video is highly unrealistic, perhaps my most unrealistic scenario this year. With that disclaimer out of the way, I would have Britain to nullify their treaties with Japan, and when the war starts, to slightly side with Russia. This means that Britain and Russia would communicate during the war, so the British can tell the Russians if they spot any Japanese warships. As such, the Dogger Bank incident can be totally prevented, so Russia can go through the Suez Canal, reach Asia and still be defeated by the Japanese. After that and the subsequent turmoil in Russia, I expect Britain and Russia to remain allied, based on family ties. This alliance would be formed at around 1904, so the Entente Cordinale, signed in the same year between Britain and France, may never see the light of day. Perhaps the Anglo-Russian Convention of 1907 is signed a lot earlier, as historically it ended the rivalry between the two countries in Central Asia, as it demarcated spheres of influence. As for Britain to secure Germany, it would be way easier and perhaps more realistic. The British joining the Central Powers was not too insane to consider and could have happened, but this video is not about that. The main problem between the United Kingdom and Germany was the Anglo-German naval arms race, but upon further reading, the British didn't care up until Germany's naval bill of 1908. The British public demanded that Britain build small warships as to make sure that the Germans never catch up to them, hence how the naval arms race happened. As early as 1909, this could have all changed, as Germany at the time had the world's biggest and best army and the second largest navy. 
this was of course extremely costly. So there was a new approach when Theobald von Bettmann Hoveck became the new Chancellor of Germany. He adopted a policy of detente with Britain, basically to stop this arms race where both countries were spending a lot of money, but nobody was getting the upper hand. It was hoped for Germany that if this is resolved peacefully, that the Germans can focus on more important matters, for example their rivalry with France. As such, the Germans seized their production of dreadnoughts which was a super heavy class battleship and mainly focused on smaller trade disrupting vessels, like the U-boat, which was way more successful as we know. As such, I can see the Anglo-German relations to greatly improve as soon as 1909, and perhaps some more treaties of friendship are signed between the two countries. Germany is still allied to Austria-Hungary, but perhaps all can go sour with the Austrian annexation of Bosnia in 1908, which angered all of the great powers, as it violated the Treaty of Berlin and unnecessarily increased world tension. The subsequent Bosnian crisis lasted for more than a year, almost leading to a world war to start, and overall Austria damaged their relations with Italy, Serbia and Russia. Germany may realize the situation and see closer relations with Britain and Russia, as Austria-Hungary is becoming more of a burden. Bismarck predicted that a world war will start for something stupid in the Balkans, so many in Germany would fear that the Bosnian crisis is the start of a great war. As such, I can see Germany to ask Austria-Hungary to back down, but also Britain and Russia are in favor of keeping the balance of power, so practically Austria-Hungary would be forced to back down, as they couldn't secure support for many other great powers, including their ally of Germany, which didn't want to start a war over this. The dual alliance would thus be put into question, and Austria-Hungary may decide to abandon Germany, as this alliance would soon be one only on paper. The Habsburgs can easily move on and find new allies, especially with Italy and France. Historically, Italy would have supported Austria-Hungary's annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina in exchange for the Austrians granting Italy some lands in Istria, Tyrol and Dalmatia. As Austria-Hungary would lack support from many other great powers, this can be their only choice, or they would be left without any allies and would have angered all of the great powers. For the sake of this video, I would have Austria-Hungary to do exactly that, which would secure Italy's loyalty in the future to come. From that point onwards, the Cousin Alliance can be formed as to oppose the Triple Entente of France, Austria-Hungary and Italy. World tension is continuing to increase and war may look inevitable as early as 1911, as then the Agadir crisis would occur. There, with the support of Britain and Spain, Germany can secure independent Morocco, which would be influenced by Germany rather than by France. As one crisis is resolved, another would happen, as Italy would invade the Ottoman Empire over Libya, which would later encourage the Balkan states to strike the Ottoman Empire themselves and almost kick them out of the Balkans. Of course, this scenario is highly unrealistic, as I have changed the power dynamics quite a lot, so the same events may not even happen or be greatly altered, but there is no way to know for sure, so I will stick to what happened historically despite all of the changes. In 1913, after the Second Balkan War, the map of Europe would look almost exactly identical, but Morocco is technically a free nation and Italy is slightly larger, so these are the only differences. All of the great powers would realize that war is on the horizon, so their alliances would be reinforced. The Ottoman Empire may join the Entente, as they would be promised the Russian Caucasus and British Arabia and Cyprus, which would sway the Ottomans. On the other hand, the Cousins Alliance has nothing to offer to them, so I think that the Ottomans are guaranteed to side with France, Austria-Hungary, but also their former enemy of Italy. If you think that this is not too likely to happen, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire were fighting against each other two separate times, in 1912 and 1913, but in 1915 they were allies. It is not too insane to consider that the Ottomans would join the Entente under these conditions, but also I don't see them going over to Russia. This has set the sides of this alternate Great War, which is more like Northern Europe versus Southern Europe. After the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and the subsequent July crisis, Austria-Hungary would declare war on Serbia, which would be protected by Russia. Eventually, all of these countries would be in a state of war. I think that the Cousins Alliance would have a big advantage, not only in Europe, but also in Africa. I think that we can all agree that the Cousin Alliance has a big advantage over in Europe, but let me tell you how the war would play out. Italy would be skeptical about their allies as there isn't anything for them to gain. But France can potentially give up Nice to Italy after the war, and maybe to help Italy gain Ticino from Switzerland right after the war. Italy would be promised Malta and British Somaliland in case of a victory, so the Italians wouldn't be too committed to the war right at the start. As for Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, I think that Russia would perform well against them, as historically the Russians pushed both countries back, while fighting Germany at the same time. This time, this is not the case, so the Entente would quickly start losing ground. 
German is pan for victory would be to knock out Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire first. Then France and Italy would be alone and have to sign for peace. So there is no need for Germany to initiate the Schlieffen plan. Bulgaria can join either side, as in one case they can potentially gain Macedonia and in another they can gain Constantinople, so both sides would promise the moon to Bulgaria. What side they end up joining I don't think would decide the war, so I would leave it up for interpretation. For the sake of this video they will join the losing side, which is the Entente, and they would occupy Macedonia, as Serbia would finally be capitulated. Romania would be encouraged to join the Cousins Alliance, as their queen is also a cousin of the three emperors. But also they would be promised Transylvania, which is looking increasingly likely that they would get considering the Russian advances in Galicia. Further, Greece is more likely to join the Cousins Alliance for the same family ties as the Romanians, but also there is probably not going to be a national schism, as the king would favor the Germans, while the prime minister would want to go to war against the Ottoman Empire, so their goals would perfectly align. This means that Greece can join the Great War several years earlier, perhaps making the Gallipoli campaign a success. The Ottoman Empire would be pretty isolated from the rest of their allies, as they suffered two catastrophic defeats in 1912, 1913 and now in 1914 they would be at war yet again, which would exhaust the Ottoman war machine. The British would be pushing them back on the Arabian Peninsula, the Russians would take Armenia, while Constantinople may fall to British and Russian forces via naval invasion near Gallipoli. The Ottoman Empire would be quick to surrender, and after that Bulgaria would drop out of the war quickly, hoping for a milder peace deal. Seeing that, Italy is likely to switch sides and try to take Savoy, Corsica and Tunisia by force. Why would Italy switch sides? Well, it's because they are Italians in a world war. Do you expect them to be loyal? Jokes aside, Italy would be in this war only to gain Malta and some African colonies, while France would only give them Nice if the war is victorious, so there isn't anything for Italy to gain, but plenty to lose. As such I can see them switching sides and still getting these territories from France and Austria, but in a guaranteed fashion, with less casualties for the Italians, so they would officially switch sides and abandon their former allies. With that, Austria-Hungary would be completely encircled, Serbia will be liberated and Russia would cross the Carpathian Mountains and near the Hungarian main. Land. This pressure would make Austria-Hungary crumble from within and drop out of the war. The French are likely to sign a peace deal at that point, without much fighting, as they shouldn't wait for Paris to inevitably fall and suffer a lot of damage and casualties. As such, the Great War would be over with a decisive Cousins Alliance victory. In the peace treaty, Italy would get all promised lands by the Cousins Alliance, with Serbia expanding into the South Slavic lands of Austria-Hungary. Bulgaria would lose their access to the Aegean Sea, with Greece expanding into Eastern Thrace and the Anatolian coastline. But Russia is likely to get Constantinople, or it would become an international zone. France would lose some minor French colonies. This could be considered a milder peace treaty for the French, at least compared to what would happen to the Ottoman Empire and Austria-Hungary. The Ottomans would be partitioned, as Britain would directly take the Arab portion and establish a mandate. Russia will take Ottoman Armenia and Laziland, and as I already mentioned Constantinople and the Aegean coastline. The rest would become a Turkish rump state, most likely being influenced by Russia. As for Austria-Hungary, they would be completely partitioned, as Romania would get all of Transylvania and Germany would directly annex the German-speaking portions of the Austrian Empire. Russia would directly annex Galicia and push for a Czechoslovak kingdom, led by a Russian nobleman, leaving Hungary with their modern-day borders and being greatly reduced in size. The Hungarian state is likely to remain a kingdom, perhaps with a German king being elected. After the war, the Cousins Alliance would emerge victorious, but their relations are likely to quickly fall out, due to the many issues and conflicts of interest between all countries. They will all have spheres of influence, as Germany would be allied to Italy, Hungary and Bulgaria most likely. Russia would be allied to Romania, the Turkish Sultanate and Czechoslovakia, while Britain would have France in their sphere, but also maybe Greece and Portugal. These sides are likely to clash in another war, that has the potential to be even deadlier than the Second World War of our own timeline. All of this is possible under this unrealistic concept, so I suggest you take a look at this video, where the Ottoman Empire never collapses but thrives and is stronger. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you there.